Hey guys and girls, uh, welcome back to another example video here, uh, example 12 this time. Let me just fix my mic here, there we go. Example 12, and uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through something called a vector. And uh, to do that, we need to include the vector library here. Since we are kind of far away from making our own dynamic, you know, expandable arrays like we talked about before, uh, we'll use one that is already created for C++. And it's a pretty good library. Like, it's it's just we can make our own version of this, but it's already here, so why not? And uh, I use this in my games, and I use this a lot. So uh, it's very useful, and it's good to have. And it's basically a box that can expand and shrink as you need it to. You know, it needs to be dynamic. So because most of the time when you're making a collection of objects, you don't know how many you need. You don't know how many are going to be in there, like... If you have a game with enemies, for example, enemies spawn, and they are all placed in this box, like, it doesn't have a fit size, right? A fixed size. So it can expand and stuff. And that's exactly what a vector is. Excuse me. It's a, a uh, dynamic container. Okay? It's a dynamic array. And what we can do is we can create one and we can play around with it just as an intro because we're going to be using this and math. Uh, dot h or cmath like we talked about in the last example uh, in the coming examples um, when we're getting a little more advanced now so vector and then the way we define a vector is that we write the keyword just like we write an integer a right vector is this the type okay that's the type and this is a little special here vector int means that we have a vector that can hold only integers all right, and then we give it the name my vec or whatever you want to call it. So this is your vector now, a vector of integers, and it, the name is my vec. This is a variable name, right? So it's the same as this, 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 and then if we had an array of size 10 here, fixed sized array, this isn't a fixed sized array, uh, this is an array of 10 integers. This is a dynamic array of undefined number of integers, okay? So, there we have a dynamic, now we can go and uh, make some, uh, you know, make whatever we want with this, basically. So, the key here is, a good trick to know is, when you use the dot operator after this, you can see a lot of functions here, okay, that, which are really, really good to know. So, you can clear a vector, completely empty it out, you can check the capacity of the vector, which you probably won't need a lot. You can access the vector at different places, at, back, begin, and things, using iterators later as well, which we'll talk about. Uh, you can check if the vector is empty. See, public, bool, so it returns a boolean. So you can use this in a if statement, for example. If my vec dot empty, then do something. And uh, end, erase, front, you can check things at different positions. Um, these are the two important ones that you're going to use. So pushback is the one you use to add things to the vector. Popback is the one you use to remove things from the back one at a time. Um, and then you have size. You can check the current size of the vector. And uh, there are a few other cool uh, functions that you can use. But those are pretty important. But pushback and popback are probably the ones you're going to use the most. And empty and, uh, and uh, maybe even swap at some points. Anyhow, let's check this out. So let us just add a few numbers in here and we'll see what happens. Let's make a for loop. Let's make a beautiful for loop and let's add 10 numbers. Let's add 10 numbers in here. So my vec dot push back. Okay, push back. And then let's let's make them random as well. S rand. Then we'll have to include seed time. Seed time. There we go. Okay, so pushback. Uh, oh, sorry. Time null. So there we go. Pushback random. Let's make it up to 100. 0, 2, or 0 is never fun. Let's do plus 1. 0 is a boring number. Um, so, okay, then we'll have 10 numbers from 1 to 100. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to just add a random number in here. Dot push. See, we never define the fixed size for my vec. Like it's just expanding as, as it needs to. So I'm going to push back uh, 102. Okay, and we can only use integers in here. Like if we try to add something else in here, we'll get some errors. So remember that when you make your vector, make sure you know which type you need uh, that vector for. And uh, now we're just going to check some things. So remember we could check the size of it. We could check the size of it. And whenever you're using functions, you need to use these parentheses afterwards even if they're empty. Okay, you know this is a function where, which takes a parameter so we need to use this uh, these parentheses and add some type of parameter in here whatever is required. And this is rand is a function so we use parentheses, empty ones. Size is a function which returns the size of the vector so we use parentheses. We'll talk about functions very very soon and then you'll understand all of this but just remember that from now. Uh, if you write variables, you of course you don't need any parentheses, but functions you need parentheses. Blah, parentheses. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Let's do my vec dot capacity. Okay, let's see the difference of that. My vec, and of course you can access you can access the elements individually as well, just like in a normal array. All right, because there is something called operator overloading which we'll talk about as well <laughs> don't worry about it but uh, yeah it's just possible in here and let us see what else we have I'm sure we can find one more thing um, let's see let's see actually you know what I think I think we're fine I think these three things will show uh, exactly what we need and of course we're just going to print everything else out. Whoops. Okay, so here we go. Now we can use my vec dot size, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then there we go. There we go. Let's see if this works. Okay, so what happened here is that uh, we got a bunch of random numbers uh, that were filled in. Yeah, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them here. And then we have 33 is the capacity. No, excuse me. Oh, size is uh, 11. We have 11 numbers in here because we added this one as well yeah there we go there and then 13 is the capacity so you're saying hmm what's why why is there the capacity bigger than the size what's the difference you know why is there a difference well the capacity it costs a lot of performance to actually increase the size of this vector every time it needs to be increased right because it's dynamic we can add numbers after numbers after numbers and it needs to expand so what it does it, it doesn't expand by one every time it expands by a bigger number and reserves some space in case it needs to add even more numbers later and then it expands double and double and double so that's why you know we have 11 numbers but we have some safe space in here if we need to add more then it won't have to expand uh, again and again right and then we printed out the first number here uh, at myvec at position 0, index 0, which is 33. And then as soon as we printed out using the for loop, we had the first number 33, all the way down to 102, which we pushed at the, at the very, very end of the vector. So there you go, guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's a vector for you, uh, dynamic, um, dynamic array, excuse me. And yeah, I hope you learned something and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.